Well, Sabrina, thank you so much for coming in. I am so excited to chat I'm with you so today. I'm so excited and thank you for having me. <laughs> this is this is so fun. We've, yeah. we've known each other for almost three years now. Three years, yeah. Meeting on the set of Open Fit. Yeah, that was awesome. So amazing. Yeah. I mean, you are, you do it all. And from the second I met you, you were just such a delightful, kind, warm person. Oh, thank you. And then I saw your work. And I was like, what is <laughs> happening? You. So I, mean, sweet of you. I mean, truly, you are the best in the biz. You are. Wow. <laughs> no, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> thank you. you. You're a hairstylist. And how would you describe your specialties? Well, I've been in this industry for over 20 years, but in the, the entertainment, working with, you know, to set work and celebrity clientele um, for about six years, six to seven years. And I've, my specialty has kind of changed over the years. And now that I am only doing set work, I kind of, since I'm not in a salon, I kind of just work with styling mostly. So that's mm-hmm. kind of my specialty is just styling. Styling hair in yeah. all of the different ways. Yeah. <laughs> and Sabrina, I know you have... <laughs> a long amazing list of people and this is not going to be all inclusive but can you please go through the clientele that you have and then i'm i know i'm gonna have some follow-up questions after you go through the list for sure okay so this list i have beyonce jay-z jennifer lopez justin bieber how did i forget about justin bieber (laughs) shay mitchell (laughs) um sabrina elba kiki palmer who i'm working with this week i'm carrie washington chrissy teigen Tina Knowles, Adrian Bailon, my girl. Um, Cheetah Girls? Cheetah Girls. Amazing. <laughs> Love her. Um, Natalia Bryant, Saweetie, oh, wow. um, Candy Burris, uh, and Steph Shep. Oh, she is such a sweetie pie. She really is. Just, she's amazing. Yeah. Just kind, brilliant. Yeah. She's, um, and like I said, she's, um, because of meeting her on Open Fit, um, she has introduced me to so many people. She has put my name out there to a lot of other people. And I don't even know how I got so lucky for That's her to do so something cool. like that for me. Um, because of her, I worked with like Rumor Willis. Like, oh, amazing. Rumor Willis, are you kidding me? That's like, incredible. I got to meet Demi Moore. Like, wow. You know, like, <laughs> and she, she, I don't even know if she realizes like how much that meant to me, you know, just for her. And she's used me for a few photo shoots and other cool. things as well. And, she recently got married. A lot of people now it's out, so people know that she recently got married, and I got to work um, do some of her bridesmaids, which was oh, awesome. so cool. Yeah, and and attend her re- wedding reception, which was oh my gosh. really incredible. Like one of the the most fun nights we've had in a long time. <laughs> so it was awesome. You gotta live it up. Yeah, she's yeah. she's just like genuinely a she's good person. So great. Yeah. yeah. So so fun. So chill. So. Yeah. She's just really cool people. Mm-hmm. I love working with her. And I'm so thankful that, like I said, she's she's put my name out there and she mm-hmm. didn't even have to do that. And it just meant so much to me. That's so cool. So I, I'm very blessed of the circle of people that I've had the pleasure and the privilege to work with in mm-hmm. this industry. Like I've, I'm so lucky That's and amazing. so thankful for them, you know? Oh my gosh. <laughs> so thankful. <laughs> And to meet you too, which is amazing. I mean, I feel lucky. <laughs> I feel lucky too. That's why I was like when he, and I was happy that he wanted to come because yeah. I was like, you have to meet her because she's such a great trainer. And like, we had so much fun on Open Fit. That was probably one of the funnest things I've had done in a long time because it was so consistent. It was such, so, it was sure. a, what, a month. Yeah. We shot. A month straight like, through. Yeah. That was, that was so fun. And so meeting like both Shay and you and um, Steph was, was it just, I feel like that has helped my career too, honestly. That's so cool. <laughs> In so many ways, yeah. Oh my so, gosh. So lucky. I'm so lucky. <laughs> uh, I mean, that's such an impressive list. I, I have follow-up questions. So you, you said Jay-Z. I didn't know you've worked with Jay-Z before. Yeah, so Jay-Z has start, he started his dreadlock journey kind of randomly. And I don't really know his story, so I'm not going to speak for him. But I know, I remember that it was kind of random. He, his hair was, he was letting his hair grow and it kind of started to dread, to dread up. So now, fast forward to now, his hair kind of looks like Basquiat. It, mm. Basquiat is a famous, um, he, he was a famous artist. He's recently passed. But if you look, if you compare him to Jay-Z, they have pretty much the same hairstyle. Oh. So I was, I had the honor of helping my um, 
fiance's hairstylist, whose name is Nakia Rashan, we started. We were able to kind of start his hair in that. To, he he wow. we would like them to stick up, and eventually now they're laying flat. But like I was able to help start that kind of journey of his locks kind of being the bigger locks and how they are, um, how they transformed into today's locks. If that makes sense for him. Wow. Yeah. That's so, was, so amazing. Yeah, and it was so fun working with him. He was really cool. I can imagine. Yeah, I, I can say that I'm one of the very few people that's done got to work with Jay Z on his hair. <laughs> it was so cool, and and such a cool look too. Is yeah. it something that uh, you and the team were like, okay, here's the look that we're going for? Or did you see that other person and we're like, we want it to look like this? No, he just wanted what he wanted, and cool. we just did what he wanted. <laughs> that's how it and it turned usually out great. works. Yeah, you, we do what they want us to do. Cool. Oh my gosh, it's amazing. Unless we have you know ideas, but for the most part, he knew what he wanted. And thank goodness we were able to execute on that. Yeah. I mean, good job. Thank you. <laughs> thank amazing. you. Thank you. And I'm very thankful to my girl, Nakia, who put me in that position as well. Yeah. I mean, she must be incredible. She is. To be working with all of these people. And yeah. they obviously always look amazing. So. Yeah. She's, I was very blessed to have worked with Jay-Z because it's still, I still get like, wow, I can't believe of all people I got to work with him, you know? That's, Especially having a, that guy on my roster. <laughs> like, that's yes. really cool. Yeah. I mean, that's incredible. Yeah. And so you mer- you worked mostly on women, but you said you also worked on Justin Bieber. Yeah. So that's so cool. There was a point, a sh- very short span of time when Justin Bieber had dreadlocks. Mm. So he got his dreadlocks done, I want to say, in the Bahamas, but he needed someone to help maintain them. So sure. I got to maintain them when he was here. So I did a few styles on it. It didn't last long because. I don't think Haley was the biggest fan. Gotcha. <laughs> but what Haley says goes. Yeah. You know, yep. and understandable. And he, he respected it. Eventually he cut it off. But he, I want to say I got to work with him a good, I did a whole music video with him. I did a few um, just things going to his house cool. and styling his hair for him a few times. So it was, and he's probably one of the most, the nicest guys. Mm-hmm. I mean, at least he was super nice to me. I had such a great experience w- with working with him. It was awesome. That's so cool. Yeah. Do you have any other kind of client highlights or fun, like your favorite look? Some of my favorite looks. Hmm. You know, I have to think. I have so sure I do. many. I know. I'm thinking like there's so many. It doesn't need to be the favorite, but a yeah. favorite. Um, yeah. Let me think. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm trying to think of all the things that I've gone through. I feel like something recent. Oh yeah, so probably one of my favorite things and my favorite looks is like the the whole J Lo thing. Like, mm. um, how easy it was once once I once I got my nerves were out of, I got my got over my nerves. Yes. You know, um, I was able to execute that really beautiful high bun that I did on her. It was a top knot and she loved it. You know, she was just like a cute top knot would be great. And I was like, Oh, I can do that. That's yes. good. <laughs> like that's yes. a good one. I love that look on her. Cool. And also there's another look that she had the same trip where we did long down straight. And um it was just bone straight, literally like cute. no layers, no nothing. It was just like a blunt cut. And she had this really cute like Kangle style hat on. Mm. So cute. So those are probably like in the most recently, like probably some of my favorite looks that I've done. And then like her wardrobe stylist, Rob Zangardi, or, and it's Rob and Muriel. I think it's Rob and Muriel. If I'm, if I'm hopefully I'm saying that correctly, yeah. but they're an incredible styling team. She <laughs> so always they, looks so beautiful. Oh my gosh. And I, I was just so lucky to work with her team because her team is incredible and they're so fun. Oh Yeah. When you're surrounded by good people, it makes yeah. everything so much better. Like it, it, I was, ner- I remember being so nervous, and because her team, she has such a great team, I, I felt so comfortable, and I was able to like, you know, my, my nerves were not so intense like I thought right. they were going to be. I thought my anxiety was going to be through the roof, but it really wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. I mean, <laughs> so it was great. Whatever you're doing, you're doing it well. So Thank you. <laughs> just keep going. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to try to keep going as much as I can. So I have so many questions for you okay. about just origins and all of the things. Yeah, but absolutely. Now you work with the best in the biz with hairstyling. So if someone were to start today, where would you tell them to start? I would say to assist. Start assisting people that um, you look up to. You know, DMing people, which is... I mean, it, it, does, it doesn't hurt to try to DM right. someone. Um, people reach out to me quite a bit, and I have worked with people that have DM'd me. Um, even if you're not in this industry, work with anyone in, in, a, in a 
even in, in the salon, I would say like assisting is probably the, the easiest thing, the best thing that you can do to learn things, especially if you're not used to being out there. Assist, assist, assist. And then um, learn as much as you can. Take continued education classes if you have to. Anything that's going to help you better your craft, but like watch what other people do, learn from other people, and be receptive to um, whatever people are teaching you. That's really important is just being willing to learn. Yeah. And I, I was reading an article where you talked about some of the people who kind of opened up doors for you and took you under their wing and all those different things. Oh, Do yes. you have any specific people that you oh kind gosh. of credit to that? Oh my gosh. Um, absolutely. Um, there's When I first started in this industry, I met Bella Sanchez, who was going to be on that season of America's Next Top Model. She needed a hairstylist. She's actually transgender. She, when I met her, she was Bello Sanchez. Mm -hmm. um, now she's Bella Sanchez. She introduced me to this um, photographer named Catherine Asinoff. I did my first ever photo shoot there. I never, I wasn't, pay, it wasn't paid, but it was like the best experience. And from there, I got to meet Tyler McDaniel, who was a wardrobe stylist, who took me under his wing, and we did m multiple photo shoots. Just, it was like just for me to get to learn. You know what I mean? How to be in this industry. He kind of showed me like pretty much everything. And then he introduced me to an, uh, a lady named Matilde Compost, and that's who I assisted mm. for a long time. Matilde has introduced me to Beyonce. She's introduced me to the world of just getting paid and knowing you know, wh you know, what to do. Like she showed me how to work on set, how to have set etiquette. And that's why I say it's really important to um, work with people that work with someone who knows what they're doing and like being open to learning. Mm -hmm. And then eventually she introduced me to Nakia Rashan and, and the reason why I got to work with Beyonce. So all those people I credit for my career because they really have opened the door for me and trusted me and saw something in me that they didn't have to see, you know? So. Well, <laughs> it also speaks to you that you are coachable and yeah. <laughs> you are a, a kind person who isn't going to take advantage of people. It's clear like people trust you to be able to bring them into some of these celebrities' worlds. Yeah, it, it, you have to, you know, make sure that you are confident, but yeah. don't overtalk someone and know that like that's their client. You know, there's a lot of things you'll learn when you assist someone. So I was, I really wanted it when I knew that it was, it was, I was able to get it. And then I was like, okay, I need to learn what to do so I can be in these positions. Mm -hmm. And now here I am. <laughs> it's so cool. It's amazing. <laughs> you mentioned set etiquette. What does that mean? And what does that look like? Because for example, when we first met on the, on the set of four weeks of focus, yes, <laughs> it, that was a bigger production than a lot of the things that I do. Dennis okay. and I, we built our company grassroots. Yeah. We do a lot of our own filming. So, wow. so having that type of thing with all these different people in the room and different okay. cameras and stuff, mm -hmm. I felt like Miley Cyrus in Party in the USA, <laughs> just like looking at everything and it's so shiny and everyone's yeah, so fancy yeah. and like, oh my gosh, what is happening? Yeah. Uh, and, and so with that, there were a lot of things that I learned about just being on a set. Yeah. So what does set etiquette look like in the hairstyling world? Yeah, so it's completely different from your world because you are the talent, right? So I'm behind the scenes. It's just making sure that I am not overstepping. There are certain calls that I'm not sure if you remember any of the calls. There's like last looks. That means that that's when hair and makeup wardrobe we all run in make sure you guys all look great and then they call us to leave you know we're, we're constantly watching it, it, the monitors and making sure that um we're we're tending to each person that we worked on you know you had a different person that was working on your hair and right. makeup and me and the makeup artist that were working with steph and um shay we had to make sure that constantly looking at the monitors making sure that they're good um and so if they like if something was going wrong if someone's hair was out of place yeah, what do you always do ask to step in if okay. we could you know okay. sometimes you can't because you guys are also working out and working with you guys is also a lot different because you guys are working out so it's okay if the hair got a little messed right. up it's going to happen in that um instance but if you're working on another set and it's like a photo shoot or something in there look meant to look perfect you're constantly stepping in if a little hair or makeup or something gets out of place. So set etiquette is also um, knowing who you're working with and respecting your client and right. respecting the people that are around you, you know, um, not talking about certain things on set, knowing that you're on, uh, you're, you're at work, you know, like not having your phone out constantly, mm. um, paying attention to what's going on around you. Um, understanding, especially if you're an assistant working with another say if I had an assistant on set she would have to understand that like this is my set and you need to make sure that you're not necessarily talking to my clients but you're mm -hmm. assisting me with whatever it is that I need so there's so many things that go into set etiquette but it's so important to learn as a hairstylist because if you're 
doing certain things, people won't have you back. And you just have to understand that. And I'm actually teaching course. I'm actually going to be teaching courses. And I'm going to, one of my courses will be about set etiquette. And I'll be explaining more of that soon. So I'm looking forward to that. That's really cool yeah. because as as someone who is trying to get into that world, mm -hmm. that could probably be a make or break thing if you get yeah. a if you get an opportunity to work with somebody but you get nervous and you talk oh too much gosh. or whatever it is and it can happen you know and, and yeah totally <laughs> right <happen. laughs> just but knowing okay here here are the expectations and what is good in this situation yeah. can be a super helpful thing. Do yeah. you have like a certain platform that you're launching that on because I feel like that's a really cool thing yeah it's gonna be cool we're not sure yet i think we're thinking about maybe doing it on youtube i haven't we haven't really thought about we haven't really discussed the platform yeah. yet but we're gonna start doing our videos or actually we're gonna start filming the first one on saturday which is really oh my exciting. gosh amazing yeah so excited so we haven't figured that out but working on we're working on that well when we log off you should talk to dennis because oh, okay. he yeah so he he's really good at all his stuff so oh good to know <laughs> so good he can help know. thank you thank you Matt. oh my gosh of course <laughs> okay so set etiquette and you also mentioned setting up your kit oh yeah in in something that i read and that's so interesting to me yes because okay your scenario yeah okay, okay. you're going to work with beyonce you're mm -hmm. getting her ready for i don't know a music video is this something that you're having a zillion meetings ahead of time planning out her looks are you going with a bunch of options so that she can make her choices then like what does that yeah. look like so it could be i haven't worked with beyonce to know exactly what she's doing recently but when i did work with her yeah so we for sure plan well it was a different thing because she her, her hair it, it was a whole situation when it came to her hair so yeah we would have to plan out her hair prior to anything that we did okay absolutely of course because she's one of the biggest celebrities in the world so everything is planned out she knows what she wants and yeah you work with these so the wardrobe stylist and you work with the hairstylist and typically you come together with the look that that either she wants or that it makes sense with the outfit and that's how and it's not a bunch of meetings but you pretty much she'll land on something and she's pretty good at knowing what looks right on her so it's not too crazy or invasive or anything like that's that. cool so you can plan ahead and bring all the things oh, yeah. that you need and for the most part working with someone as big as her she does have a a, a, a glam room so she has a lot of things that she needs already at oh. her place which is great but of course I, you would always bring your kit with you sure just to make sure because you never know you know so what's like an example of you don't have any prior meetings, but you have to be ready for a bunch of different scenarios. What does that look oh, like? That's like daily for me. Okay. Okay. So work. what's your daily <laughs> life like? So it depends on who you're working with, but like sometimes, yeah, you just, you just have, to, it's important to make sure that you're, you're, when you're carrying your kit, of course you want it to be, you want it, you don't want it to be crazy heavy, but you need to make sure that you carry all the necessary things because you never know what someone wants. So you like, need what to, does that look like? Yeah, so I, like for my kit, it's I carry the CalPAC. It's um, Jen Atkin partnered with with CalPAC, and she created pretty much kits for like hairstylists like me. But there are trunks and there's different types, and I have the second biggest trunk, and all everything that I, I use fits in there. So I do things that I specialize in. I do you know like regular hairstyling. I can also do wigs. So I have like a mm. wig, a, ki a little kit that I can, all my wig stuff that I need, it's in this little pouch. And then I have things for like, if someone wants a slick ponytail, I have another pouch for that. Mm. I have all my irons in one pouch, you know, like all my serums and, you know, um, hair oils in another, you know, everything is, it just, ha it has to be as organized as possible. So it's easier for you to, when you want to set your kit up, you can just pick out something from each thing, you know, what, you know, where it is. And labeling is also good. If you, mm -hmm. if you don't know, you know, if you, you know, your kit, but labeling is also super helpful. You just have to take out everything that you know. Um, and you just have to be prepared. Now, obviously sometimes someone might spring up something on you and they're like, want something completely different from what you're used to. As long as you have it in your kit, you should be good. It's good to have everything in your kit. I've had times where I've tried to minimize my kit thinking, oh, I know what they usually want. And yeah. they've surprised me with something. That's always the challenge. It's yeah. like you leave something out of your kit and you're like, okay, what am I going to do? <laughs> For <laughs> you know? sure. So you have to be creative in those instances. But I learned that as much as I don't necessarily like to have such a heavy kit sometimes it's okay because I I'd rather be prepared than not you know what I mean right. and so that's really helpful to just make sure that you're kind of overly prepared in this um, situation because you just never know always bring hair if you know who you're, whose hair you're doing always bring extra extensions you know mm -hmm. um, just always be prepared because you never know that's a really good word because I, I can imagine that people 
surprise you at points. Yeah, off, off, quite often. <laughs> was there ever a, a time where you're like, I'm in over my head. I don't know what to do here. Oh, yeah. Um, it hasn't really happened in recent years, but like I, I feel like when I'm working on big productions, mm -hmm. you know, it gets overwhelming. You know, and you're working, you're working with multiple people, and then you work with people that are really, really good, and you're like, I don't know if I'm as good as them. So then you start getting intimidated, and then you feel like you're in over your head, and then you're when you're able, when you actually complete something, you're like, okay, I can do this. You know, like you gotta. Sometimes we get in our own way, and it's good to like kind of like just do the work and don't worry about anyone else because you wouldn't be here if you couldn't do it. You know. <laughs> it's it's so true, especially when you're in a, a room of really talented people. But yeah. it's like if you're in that room with really talented people. You probably belong. Yeah, right? Sometimes, and it, it it took a long time, honestly, for me to because I did, was I feel like I wasn't formally trained in this industry. Mm -hmm. I have done hair for a long time, you know, but the, I noticed that when I was assisting people, how different they their approach was, and so I thought I had to change what I was doing, and I realized like. Well, I, I realized to not change how I did things because I did I, the way I do things is what makes me unique. You know, mm -hmm. um, I don't do things the way that everyone else does, but I can still accomplish a look. And you know what I mean? That's one thing where I realized because I would I would kick myself in the head like, oh, I'm not doing this right. And I would try to make it seem like I was doing it like someone else realizing like, well, I, I can't do it like them because that's not how I'm used to doing it. And it's OK to do it your way. For sure. You know? And do you mean like in how you braid someone's hair? Exactly. Or in, okay. Yeah, how you curl a ha someone's hair or how you put someone's hair up in a ponytail. Like I remember the ponytail thing was so different when I saw people putting hair up in a ponytail and they would do it by sections and they would wrap the string around. And I was like, wow. And I see how easy it is. But then in my mind, I'm like, that's never how I did it. Yeah. And I used to try to change my ways of doing it and do it where I did it in sections. And I realized like, that's okay, Serena. It's not how you do it do it the way you know to do it it's you still you're still accomplishing it the way that you know how and so now i stopped and i left all that behind and i do things the way i want to do them and the way i i've always done them and i still get the same result if not better sometimes to me you know that's just how i feel <laughs> which which is awesome yeah it because especially in art i feel like i'm realizing more and more there's more than one way to get from a to z mm -hmm. and especially if you like how it looks and the client likes how it yeah. looks doesn't matter how you twist a yeah. ponytail. Is that how you think, say it? <laughs> I used to think that it mattered, but I realized that it didn't. So, what was your first year like? Yeah, my first year it was everything was scary. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah. know, uh, my first year, my, one of my very first things that I've worked on was a Beyonce production. It was my very first thing, and I remember being well. So that's a terrified. way to start. Yeah, that's <laughs> why I'm saying it's so crazy that that's how I started. Yeah, <laughs> you know, my first big paid gig was working with Beyonce when she was pregnant at the Grammys and we I didn't work on her though I worked on her dancers cool it was so fast paced that you really didn't have time to like really freak out so I think that that was a good thing for me because I work good under pressure mm -hmm. in, at least in instances of that like that um but it was it was I remember it was like okay I'm here I and I had to remind myself that I'm here for a reason uh -huh. but I was terrified because I'm like working and I've never had I feel like I wasn't sure how much experience everyone else had. I just knew for myself, like it was my first big thing and to like not get anyone upset and just to do whatever, whatever I was told and make sure that I wasn't like in anyone's way. So that was like my first year constantly of like every job that I did. And I got to work with some pretty incredible people and mainly it was set work in the beginning. It wasn't really like celebrity clients at first. Sure. Yeah. And then eventually... The celebrity clients came a few later, a few years later, but working on set was the most um, scariest part because you're there's so much, there's so many people, so much going on, and you still want to make sure that you're doing what you're supposed to do. That makes sense. That makes yeah. total sense. <laughs> <laughs> and I feel like I over talked myself. No, no. I mean, it's going. I mean, a first experience in any career is mm -hmm. it's intimidating, yeah. right? And also, you're going to work with the queen and yeah. all of her people. I mean, that's incredible. I saw amazing. your your work on the Oscars 2022 when she was in the uh, lime oh, green. Oh, yeah, that, that was so cool. Yeah. That was amazing. What was that experience that like? That was a lot, actually. It yeah? Was, what was that day like? <laughs> that experience was, was intense because it started off um, prior. And like what I love about Beyonce is she's she overly prepares for things, mm -hmm. which is great. So she'll have us do full on um, run throughs. Okay. Like so a dress rehearsal kind dress, of thing? Full on okay. dress rehearsals. And so 
we did day of or the one of the days of the dress rehearsals it was about f- almost 40 hairstyles i think it was 35 to 40 hairstylists because there were so many dancers and uh singers and you know her she has a i think an all-female band as well mm-hmm. so they were all there and um so we, we were all doing hair and she wanted specific styles everyone had the same braids with the beads yeah very um intricate so I want to say that we all braided their hair two days before. So that was the dress rehearsal. Wow. And so a lot of them had to sleep with their hair like that, you know? And then we, I think we put the beads on the day of the actual event. But it was insane because um, then there were some girls who didn't show up to the other part. So we had to like scramble and get the other girl's hair done. So it was just oh a, it was a big production. But it was it was so fun. It's always an experience working with of course, Beyonce, because you're just like, oh, this is, she's always putting on such an amazing show. So it was very intimidating, but also probably one of the most amazing experiences because you know what it's going for. It's going to be on the Oscars and Mm -hmm. you're a part of such something so amazing. So yeah, it was pretty cool. (laughs) Do you have any other kind of favorite moments in your career so far? Oh, I have, I mean, yeah, so many favorite moments. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, obviously working with Beyonce is probably, I got to go to, to, Travel, traveling with her was amazing. Um, it was a lot of work, but you look at her work ethic and you're like, okay, I want to s- kind of be like that, you know? Yeah. Um, working with like, I, one of my favorite things is working with Shay. Um, Shay mm-hmm. took me on a three and a half week uh, South America tour. Oh, cool. Yeah. So like that was amazing getting to travel. i never thought I would ever travel around South America. That's so cool. And was I, it for her work? Or it was for her work. It was okay. for a project she was working oh, on. Cool. And it was um, just amazing to experience something different. So that's probably one of my, my favorite things today because I'm not, I don't really, I'm not the biggest fan of like traveling, sure. but of course I don't mind it, but, right. and it's for work. So it's a different experience, but I didn't know what I was getting myself into. And it turned out to be such a great experience, you know, just to learn other cultures and like see how they do things and it was really impressive, and I, I still like am so excited that I got to do that and experience that because a lot of people, as a hairstylist, like we don't get to experience those things. So it was pretty, pretty cool. That's so. What yeah. countries did you go to? We went to Argentina, Peru, Colombia, and Brazil. Wow. Yeah. Do you have a favorite one? Oh my gosh, I would say Peru, just because cool. I got to see the ruins, and it was just that was it was just a different experience unlike anything i would i thought i would ever experience yeah. they did get to go to machu picchu i didn't get to go but we were right there at the bottom so it, it, i mean we got to see all the ruins i have so many videos of just all the cool things that we got to see it was really cool that's amazing yeah. i haven't been to south america yet but okay. that's if you get a chance to go we went to it was called ole and tetambo it's okay. really hard to say but yeah and then we went to cusco after oh. yeah it was really cool <laughs> That is, yeah, that's amazing. I, yeah. I like traveling. I don't love the flying part. Yeah, me either. This is a sidebar <laughs> though. I, do you like flying or no? I mean, I, I don't mind it anymore. I used to could not stand traveling or flying. Flying. But now it's not so bad because I do it so much. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's the thing where I'm not sitting there freaking out every time I'm flying. Mm-hmm. But when we hit turbulence, I freak out. Yeah, and same. I saw this video the other day. This girl was sitting next to a pilot on one of her flights. And oh. she said it actually helped me a lot because she had a lot of anxiety around flying. Yeah. And so she had a, this like jello cup in her hand. Okay. And she, she was like, the pilot described the the atmosphere that a plane is in like jello and then she took a rock and she stuck it in the jello and it sticks in there yeah and so turbulence is a lot like the atmosphere just kind of jiggling like the jello does yeah but even if the rock jiggles it's not going down because of all the atmospheric pressure okay got you and so that made a lot of sense yeah. to me and it made me feel so much better yeah that makes sense that's actually a really good metaphor right like that's cool yeah and so next time i'm freaking out when i'm yeah. flying maybe i'll be going to south america but <laughs> <Maybe>. <laughs> You should try though for sure. Um, I, we also went to this place called Florinopolis, which okay, is in Brazil, because we didn't go to like Rio or Sao okay. Paulo. So we went to it was like an island and it was beautiful. So if you ever get a chance to like just visit Brazil, like that's a, another place I feel like I've never heard of it until I went. Such a beautiful place, and I would highly recommend it. Okay. Yeah, we're making it happen. Yeah, I'm looking at Dennis. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and I saw you were on a plane recently with J Lo. Oh yes. Where did you go? What'd you do? So she, we were promoting her. She has a um, a cocktails line called Delola. Oh, cool. So it's like different cocktails. I think they're all tequila, if I'm not mistaken, different flavors. And so nice. we were, she was 
promoting slash trying to sell them to different companies. So we went on a short tour. It was what, three days? I think we went to eight different cities. So mind you, we were on a private jet flying to, we were in different states, I think three different states a day. <laughs> it was so Stop. intense. Stop. Yeah, it was crazy. Probably the most, and I had been on a private jet before, but I realized like, you know, people, there's so much talk about private jets. I realized I'm not the biggest fan of private jets. Sure. But, you know, it's cool to each their own. It was cool because I got to do it with J-Lo. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, yeah. Yeah. It was amazing. <laughs> so that was fun. It was probably one of the most intense but amazing experiences I think I've had in my career to date, for sure. I mean, that's incredible. Yeah. So it, she was just kind of doing a, a pop-up in each one. And yeah. when you're there... And like, I didn't so you, go with her. We just stayed at the at the uh, FBO, which is the pretty much where the jets land. You okay. Know, we, unless we were sleeping, then we would stay at these amazing hotels. I got to stay at some of the most beautiful hotels, which was great too. Um, but you know, you're only there for a night, and then you're like, yeah. the night, or you're is it was it there for a night? Yeah, because we were cause literally like I think I was gone for what four days, four or five days. It was very short though. But in between those days, it literally was. <laughs> three cities in oh different, different states a day it was insane but it was cool it was such a great experience like another experience I never ever thought I would ever have it was incredible that so so the work portion of that yeah you're on the plane are you getting her ready on the plane and then pretty you much. land and she leaves and goes to the event and then comes back yeah pretty much we'll touch wow. her up so typically um overnight we'll sleep at whatever hotel the next morning we would get her ready in the hotel so her we would mm-hmm. we would get her ready in her room and then um, touch her up once we were actually on the plane. So I didn't gotcha. have to do any actual hair. Unless she was like, I just want a completely different look. Which didn't happen, but it could have happened. So sure. I had to be prepared. You know what I mean? So I yeah. always had a little kit with me to make sure that like, if she wanted anything changed or touched up, I was you know, prepared for that. You're yeah. always prepared for everything. You have to be. Especially yeah. with someone like her. Yes. You know? Where I'm, I'm sure, I mean people of this caliber they they know what they want yeah they know what looks good on oh, them yeah. and what they don't like yeah so and she knows what she likes yeah you know that's what i and it's good to work with people who know what they want because it makes it, it does make your life a lot easier when they know how they want to look because for me someone who mm-hmm. is not a hairstylist <laughs> my language around trying to communicate what I want is probably completely different than yeah. what it actually should be. <laughs> I might say I want something straight and you're like, Oh, actually that's not what it is at all. <laughs> there have been so many times right. where I just, I think I know what I want, yeah. but I don't. But mm-hmm. people who are doing this all the time. Yeah. They, they know. It. And yeah. she's been working for so long, um, in this industry. So she's yeah. like, and she gets her hair and makeup done constantly. So mm-hmm. tip, it, it, but it's always good. Another um, tip that I will share with someone who's a hairstylist or new to the industry is like, if you're going to work with someone, especially as big as JLo, and I've learned this over the years, I didn't come up with this. This is not something that I came up with, but to have styles ready. Like mm. if it's, if you have, even if it's on your phone and your Instagram, you can save, save a little, um, a little, slide that says that's just for that client and like different hairstyles that you think would look good on them oh that's smart that was something that i learned along the way from jen atkin who i love she's amazing um she started is it pronounced way 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 you're right yep her products are amazing aren't they amazing yes yeah i love way and i'm so thankful that i get to work with her and i get to work with way a lot too because so what, what's your relationship with that? are you do you like work with them in a professional capacity or are you just friendly or yeah so what happened was so Jen Atkin also owns a platform it's like mainly like a hairstylist platform oh, it's cool. called main addicts right okay so main addicts is all things hair it's a literally it's a community and um, there's a bunch of tutorials you can go on their website there's so many tutorials and there's so many different articles and like mm. it's all things literally hair and beauty so she decided that she wanted to do like a small agency, you know? Mm. And one day she messaged me when I was, I want to say it was, it was like right before the pandemic. It was, I think November, 2020, 2019. And I was sitting on my couch and I get this message from her. And I thought it was, I thought she, it was fake. I didn't, I was like, there's no way she was messaging me, but she was actually asking me if I was represented by anyone Wow. and I hadn't been represented by anyone. And yeah. so she, um, ended up, Pretty much, she's now my, she's not my agent, but she owns a comp. she owns Main Addicts, Main Addicts, which is um, like a small agency also. So there's a, cool. our division of it is called, we're the Creator Collective. So it started off, I think, six people, and then I ended up in there somehow, and some people have left, Some and then now, I think it's like 
I want to say it's like 10 or 11 of us oh, now. great. So we're grown, but she's keeping it like a boutique type of agency. Cool. But it's been amazing because we've been killing it. Like everyone that's been working with Main Addicts has been doing such an amazing job. And we're so lucky. That's so cool. So everyone who's a part of that, do companies submit to Main Addicts and then you all get kind of put in these different scenarios or how does that work? So I think it could work like that, but also we have agents. So I do have an agent okay. who goes and they, they work for us. You know, they, it's yeah. like before I had an agent, I was pretty much, you know, contacting people, seeing who, yes. I, who needed hair, hitting yeah. up my fellow artists. And so now I don't have to do that. My agents will go out and they'll contact people. So they reach out, they pretty much submit me to a bunch of people and, and see who bites pretty much. Cool. I'm not sure if that's exactly how it works, but I kind of have an idea. That but my, I feel like they've been doing such a great job because they've been keeping me super busy and like meeting you is, is a result of working with main addicts also. Oh, yeah. amazing. Yeah. So that's how I got to work with you on open fit was through main addicts. Oh, that's so, yeah. wow. Yeah. Jen Atkin is, is amazing. And my agent, they're amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I have two agents at the, at this current time and they're both incredible and I'm super thankful for them. When you have good people in your corner, yeah. it makes all the difference. Yeah. So I'm curious about the skills that you think are the most important. If someone is trying to become a stylist or even honestly, just at home, selfishly for myself, how okay. do I improve my own hair? Like what are the yeah. different uh, skill sets that people should work on? Um, just really understanding what you're looking at especially when it comes to hair, especially people who want to learn like the more intricate things like braiding, mm. really understand what you're looking at. Because if you don't understand what you're looking at, it, you may have to like stop what you're doing, practice it, or even go to the next video. Um, different skill sets. I think it's just more so understanding and listening because I feel like people really can do hair. You just have, and also knowing how to, how to move your hands. And mm. like, especially like if you're, say you're, you want, beautiful bouncy curls there's specific ways of curling your hair and I don't think people really know like if you want a certain look how to curl your hair properly so just really being visual and able to listen and understand and comprehend I think listening skills and understanding those are like important for um learning you know what I mean if you're if you really want to know how to do something on your own you know what I mean um so when it comes to doing hair you want to learn how to like do some just understand like and listen to how they're curling it and like mimicking it because sometimes people don't know how to hold the eye, like a, a, a curling iron or even a flat iron for that matter. Right. You know what I mean? So I think it's, it's important to just pay attention carefully before you just try it. <laughs> you know what I mean? And like, listen and make sure that you're, you're full understanding before you try something, especially if you're using like a hot tool, you know? Yes. So I think that's really important. A skill to have is to listen and understand. Yeah. I, I mean, <laughs> I curl my hair one way. I know how to do okay. it one way. And then okay. I've tried other things, but it always ends up looking the same. And so when you're saying, oh, you, you hold it in different ways, I must just always be holding it in the same way because I'm trying to achieve different things, but it never works. Got you. So yeah. I need your course to come out. Yeah, yeah. So that's, that, that's exactly why I want to be able to do courses. And just to give a little bit more of a thorough explanation of how to do things, to make it, to simplify it for people who, like at home, who just are not sure how to do their hair on a regular basis and who want to learn and they don't, maybe they can't afford to go to a beauty right. salon or, or it's too far that it's just not in the, in the cards for them. So I want to be able to be able to teach people, you know, the, the most basics and it's easier than you think, you know, it's just some people have a knack for it over others, but I feel mm -hmm. like people can do things, you know, it's all about learning and understanding and taking a time out. For sure. Yeah. I mean, some people definitely do have more of a knack for yeah. it and something that was, interesting that I, I did when I was kind of just reading about you and all the things is it seems like you had kind of a, a certain moment or a period of time where you realized you were an artist. Oh, and yes. oh my God, you've read a lot. I'm thoroughly impressed by your research. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's cool to, to learn about yeah. you in, in all these different things. And I just thought that is a really cool kind of aha moment yeah. because I know in myself, it's you're with yourself every single day, right? So it, it's so easy to to yeah. look past achievements yeah. and to underestimate abilities and stuff. But what was this moment that you had? So I, I, there was a point where I, before I even moved to LA, I was I would always think to myself like, I wish that I had a talent. I wish that like there was something cool that I can do that so that I didn't have to work my nine to five. I was yeah. like overworking my nine to five. Yeah. I'm like, what? And I just I've always done hair. I've I've been licensed in cosmetology since 2002 cool. 
and I went to cosmetology school in high school and I just, I wasn't into working in a salon, but I never knew that I was considered an artist or that was a talent mm. until I moved to LA and I realized like it can actually be an art. Once I started to do different um, magazines and like you realize like, well, and then they're calling you an artist and I'm like, wow, this is my form of art. I am talented. I yeah. had no clue that I had a talent. I just, it was always something that I've done. I've been a hair, I've been, I've done hair as a little girl, like I've always done it. So really? I never looked at it as a talent or as a, a, an artistic thing. I just saw it as something that I just knew that I can do, you know? So growing up and realizing that it was like the best thing for me because I was like, wow, this is like, I can actually make money doing this and this is something that I love to do. And people actually say, wow, you're very talented and you're an artist. It's like incredible. It's like a, the, one of the best feelings, you know? Yeah. I just, I honestly had no idea. <laughs> I was very naive to, to, to realize or to think that I wasn't, you know, an artist and I wasn't talented. So I realized that and that was, it was really cool. I, I realized mean, it here in LA. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, it was really cool. But it speaks to how incredibly humble and wonderful you are that, oh, thank you. that you are like, yeah, you're, you're just very humble in, in that. But I hope that now you can see, like, look at yourself in the mirror and be like, yeah, I know what I'm doing and I'm yeah. really good at what I do. I mean, just looking at all of the pictures of the wow. things that you create. <laughs> Let's say, you know, someone is going to want a certain hairstyle that you've never done before. Mm -hmm. What's your process like of practicing? Well, first of all, it really depends. So I always tell people first and foremost, if you feel that you are not capable of, of doing something, don't do it. Okay. And it's okay to say no to yeah. certain things. You know, if I know that there's something I can't do, I'm going to say no first and foremost. Mm -hmm. But if it's something that I'm like, okay, I've never done that before, but I know I can accomplish it. Yeah. You have to make sure because most people are good at like giving you inspo before a shoot, you know, and you're like, so you just have to make sure that you prepare yourself. Mm. So if you don't, if you know that you don't have certain items, go pick those items up. Um, sometimes it's okay to watch certain videos. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I go and I'll watch certain videos, especially if they show you like a video of someone who is, they want this style, learn that style, learn the, like if there's a video to it, watch the video. Mm -hmm. If you know someone who's done something like that, who's a, a hairstylist that you know, look on their page, see if mm -hmm. they've done a tutorial. You know what I mean? Like I utilize every resource. I will go and try to like, look at all the tutorials. I would go on YouTube if I don't know something, yes. you know, it doesn't hurt to get a little refresher. And like I said, continued education is always, is also so important to like, keep yourself like fresh and mm -hmm. keep your mind fresh and understanding like what are the new things that are coming out because there's always something new coming out and so that's why I do specialize in doing certain things like I don't do hair color and hair okay. hair cutting um and I that's except what on yourself except on myself yes. yeah I will do that on myself <laughs> and it always looks amazing yeah I, and I, can, I actually do cut hair um if I have to sure but it's very rare Unless yeah. I get, I'm, I'm trying to blend like extensions with someone's natural hair, then that's like an obvious, I have to do that. You know what I mean? Sure. But, yeah, I didn't so. know that, but oh yeah, as a hairstylist, I'm sure that's obvious. Yeah. So you have to like, just know how to make sure that your everything looks good. But if you don't know how to do something, it's okay to say no. But if you, you know, you're not sure if, it, if you, if you do your best to figure it out, practice it before you get on, you're actually working, especially if it's a high profile client. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like if you don't feel comfortable doing it, I would just say no. And that would save you a lot. You know what I mean? Because then you can give them something that they like. Yeah. Rather than yeah. going into a shoot yeah. or something. Yeah. I, I would always recommend if you don't know how to do something, you've never done it. It's okay to just not do it. You, you would be saving yourself also in the long run. <laughs> it's so smart. Yeah. So smart. So you have amazing things going. You're super busy. Yeah. But what are some things that you're looking forward to? Um, well, I'm, we're launching my tools line s soon. So I'm really excited about that. Like hair I, tools, hair tools, like hot tools. <gasps> yes. Oh my I'm gosh. So, excited. so I'm really looking forward to that. That's coming up soon. Um, I'm going to be in a, a huge campaign with Briogeo, which is, oh, a, yeah, I've used their stuff before. Oh my God. Aren't they amazing? Yeah. They're, their so products great. Are great. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm actually, we shot a campaign and so I'm looking forward to that coming out. Um, I was telling you about the project that I shot with Shay Mitchell last year. Um, that's coming out next month in August. Oh my gosh. It's going to be on Discovery Plus. So I'm Amazing. really excited about that. Are you allowed um, to say the name yet? I don't know yet. And so I, maybe not that, yet. That's fine. Yeah. It, if we I, can I'll keep get, that a secret. Yeah, we'll keep it a secret. But it'll be on <laughs> Discovery Plus. Watch cool. it with Shay Mitchell. You might see me in there. You might not. Because we there's a lot of camera time, but you know, 
how they edit things. So I, I may not make it in there, but I may have made, made it in there. So we'll I'm going to be sitting on my couch <laughs> eating my popcorn, yeah. like cheering you on. It's so cool. I would be so <laughs> excited if, if so. But if not, it's all good. Um, yeah, so I'm really looking forward to those things. Cool. Um, I can't wait for my tools line to launch, though. Yeah, tell me about that. What are you making? So we're making, right now we're starting off with flat irons. So Great. we'll probably launch a flat iron. And eventually, we'll, I, I my goal is to hopefully launch like a whole line. It'll cool. be like flat irons, tools, um, blow dryers, barrel irons, hot brushes. That's that's the goal. But we're going to start slow and work our way up. So I'm Smart. really excited. Yeah. Do you have a certain date in mind for when you're ready to launch them? Or are they already ready to go? Well, they are almost ready. Not quite. But we are, we're taking our time to make sure that it's right. Yeah. You know what I mean? So we don't have a launch date, but we are... It's going to be in the near, very near future. That is very exciting. Yeah. I cannot wait to buy I was, one. I mean, I, 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 you're so sweet. I appreciate yes. you supporting. I really appreciate that. I'm so excited. It's going to be exciting. Okay. Yeah. In the summer, fall. Oh, there in the summer, go. fall? Perfect. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> we're in the summer. Yeah. Yeah. That's encouraging. That would be, that would be amazing. Especially like with the colors that we're looking at, I think it'd yeah. be great for the summertime. So. Oh my gosh. Amazing. Yeah, I'm so excited. Okay. So we have hot tools yeah tools line coming out and we also sell hair too so one thing i I haven't and i haven't really put it out there but i'm ready to like let people know we have hair that i do sell hair i sell all different types of hair curly hair straight hair colored hair textured hair oh my gosh yeah so if you are looking to get hair you can always come to me (laughs) that's amazing yeah so okay so what does that mean so a stylist who is looking to do their clients, they yeah. can come to you and you're sourcing all these different colors Absolutely. and cuts and textures mm-hmm. and all the things. Yep. So, and we have a website and a, so it's, it's obviously not directly through me. Not, it's not, I'm not selling it from my platform, sure. but it's called stack bundles. Great. Um, and it's, Literally all different types of hair, different colors. And I'm so excited because going to the Cosmocon, we, we've Cosmoprof convention. Yeah. We've also got to source a lot of new, new, um, manufacturer. So I'm really excited for oh what, it, what that is also going to turn into. That's so yeah. cool. So is that the website that people go to? We can like pop yeah. it up on the mm-hmm. screen. Absolutely. Say it again. Stack bundles. We'll give Stack, you the correct okay, perfect. spelling. We'll, everything, we'll put so. it on there. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. And yeah. then you said you, you're also creating courses. Yes. So that's another thing. So it's, it's you're you know, doing it all. You have to, you yeah. know, because I love doing hair. Yes. But I feel like there's so much more that I feel like I can teach people because people ask me a lot of questions yeah. and I'm like, well, let me just Put it out there for you guys. For sure. You know, or I can hopefully answer all the questions that people have in my courses. Yes. <laughs> you know. Exactly. Because then, yeah, it, it's just, it's great to answer people individually, but yeah. clearly people, are, like more and more people will be wanting yeah. your advice. Yeah. And just because of the incredible success you've had, it's yeah. it's something that you need to share with the world. Yeah. And it's okay. <laughs> I used to, I used to be so nervous to share certain things. So I'm like, these are my personal things that I've of learned. Course. But I realized like, er, like you're you, no one's going to be like you, but it's okay to share certain things with people and letting them know. Cause there are a lot of people who don't know how to do certain things. Well, and it's even okay. if someone has the same exact skill set as you do, they will never be you. Yeah. There's, there's so much that yeah. goes into being a hairstylist or yeah. a trainer yeah. that, no one can replicate because of your personality, like exactly who you are, how you treat people. That's, that's something that you can't replicate. So even if they have the same skill set, that's great. And they can have their personality and click with someone else because exactly me as a trainer, I'm not going to click with everybody there. I have a very specific style. I will never yell at somebody. (laughs) And so, you know what I mean? Love that. Yes. Yeah. But some people think that that's what they want. You're so so good. Yeah. You're so good. I, I, yeah, obviously watching you is so fun and you're so good at what you do. Oh, thanks. So I loved watching you and like even doing some of the, um, workouts was fun too. Oh yeah. That was cool. Good times. Yeah. Oh, I wish that program could come back. I know. I I I wonder if it will. They should. I I I hope so. It was really successful. Yeah. People seem to like it. Yeah, they love, really like that. So you can put fun. it out in the universe and yeah. see if that catches. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully we all get to like <laughs> right? the whole crew. Come, we'll come back again. We'll see. Oh, that'd be so much fun. That would be fun. Oh my god, I, I would love that because that was probably one of the funnest things I did. And that was like my one of my first big jobs working with main addicts. Actually, oh cool. It was my actually my, my first big job working with main addicts. I think if I'm not mistaken, that was in January of 2021 yeah. or 2020. Yeah, um, 2021. Oh, that was 2021. Yeah. Wow. Time just flies. It really does. <laughs> wow. That's amazing. Yeah. Okay. I, for some reason, I thought it was 2020. Wow. Got it. Yeah. So if you were not a hairstylist, what would you be doing? Well, I think if I was, 
I, I think I would be still working at Cisco Systems. I used to, I saw I'm from San Jose. Okay. Lived in, uh, you know, lived in Silicon Valley. I feel like I probably would still be at Cisco. I loved working there when I worked there. Yeah. It was a great company, had a lot of friends. I feel like I would hopefully have worked my way up to being something different, but I think that that's probably where I would be because that's where I left. That was the last thing I did before I moved to LA. Wow. Yeah. That's <laughs> very different. Very different. And I, it was, it's a tech company, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think that that's where I would be. I mean, I could be wrong, but I think that that's where I was. And if I, I, I took the leap to move to LA just yeah. kind of randomly so I, I wouldn't have left because I, there was no reason for me to leave, but I needed a change. Wait, yeah. so what was that like? So, so all this, one day you wake up and you're like, this isn't it. Well, they were doing layoffs. They weren't laying me off. Right. They were doing layoffs, massive layoffs. And I was thinking, this is my opportunity to figure out what I want to do. One of my best friends who lived in LA, she used to live in the Bay Area, okay. but she moved to LA with her boyfriend. And she was like, you need to get out here. She's like, let's do something. So we decided that we were going to start a clothing line. Oh, cool. Or reselling clothes. Yeah. You know? And we did. We, we like had sourcing it. Yes, clothes. Exactly. Like and consignment? Pretty much. Yeah. Okay, so we were cool. going down, even like utilizing like the at, the Santee Alley and like, oh. you know, just going to different dis- distributors or whatever cool. and getting clothes and reselling them. Cool. So it was fun. It was, it was cool, but I realized that that wasn't really something that I liked to do mm-hmm. <laughs> and I wasn't the best at it. Sure. And so um, it was fun to explore something different and realize that I had that in me to, to, to leave San Jose and to come out here and do something different. Um, but I realized that it wasn't for me. So I, I had to figure it out. So eventually I would, I would tell people, Oh, I'm a, I'm a hairstylist just kind of on the side, yeah. not even realizing what it was going to turn into, but it was like a side hustle. Just doing hair was supposed to be just a side hustle. And, um, eventually, uh, told people that I was a hairstylist they um, started using me, uh, using me for different things, and then eventually I just met the right people. So um, it was a whole uh, just tr- transition in my life where I thought that I was going to be at Cisco forever, and I just asked my boss if he can lay me off, and he did. Wow. And I was able to collect a severance, and that's how I was able to move to L.A. <laughs> so it worked out so well. I mean, it's just meant to be at <laughs> it this was meant point. To be. Like, that's so yeah. cool. It was so meant to be I did not think that I would be doing this even when I moved here I wasn't trying to do this so it was really when I say it was meant to be it was genuinely meant to be that's very encouraging yeah. right because yeah. it's it's easy to feel like stuck and yeah. and, and whether stuck yeah yeah and it some people are <clears throat> excuse me they they thrive in a corporate yeah. setting in a startup setting yeah. and a creative setting, whatever it is. But if you feel stuck in whatever setting you're in, there's always opportunities yeah. in, in other places. And I think yeah. that's a cool thing about the day and age that we live in. Like yeah. you were saying, Jeanette can, the creator of Way, yeah. can DM you. She DM'd me. One day <laughs> you incredible. don't know Beyonce, the next day you yeah, know Beyonce. Literally. It's like, <laughs> and you're just thrown into these situations and it happens so fast and then it's like a whirlwind and you're like, Wow. So I've had since then I've had, and I started only, I've only been in this industry, like I said, for about six, five, between five and six years. And uh, it's been a whirlwind. It's been so many incredible things after another. And I, of course, so many challenges along the way, but sure. it's been, when I tell you it's been incredible and I never thought that I would be here. It, I'm so thankful and blessed. It's incredible. That's amazing. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. <laughs> where, where can people find you in, in all the different ways? So... We're going to be launching our tools line soon, but for now, you can find me on social media um, on Instagram at Sabrina.Porsche. And my TikTok is, I think it's Sabrina Porsche. I need to get better at doing TikTok. Same I don't here. even know my TikTok yeah. name. <laughs> but I, I am know. on TikTok. I'm sure you can just like look up my name and yeah. you'll find me. So amazing. Yeah, I'm working on that platform. <laughs> social media is a second job. It is a whole other job mm-hmm. because I also work with different brands. So yes. I'm constantly filming brand videos as well so I need to get better at doing TikTok because of that brands love that yeah they do they love TikTok and I didn't realize that that was going to become a whole thing so I'm trying to get better at that well yeah that's a great thing to keep working on (laughs) yeah but you're doing great already thank you I appreciate you (laughs) so much gosh thank you so much for coming thank you for having me I you have no idea I appreciate you thank you you're so welcome it means a lot to me we'll do it again soon okay I can't wait all right thank you yay oh my gosh (laughs) this is so fun so excited